remember this. <laughs> Hello lovelies, welcome back. Alright, Pavlova Magic. I did not know they still made them. So growing up as a kid in South Australia, around all right, 40 odd years ago, um, Pavlova Magic was bloody everywhere. Everyone had it in their cupboards, everyone used it. And the Pavlovas I remember were freaking fantastic. So I'm a bit excited today to give it a go because believe it or not, I've never made one of these. Now straight off the bat, you don't even need eggs. So how brilliant is that? I had a look at the use by day. It's got over a year. So you can have these sitting in the cupboard for a year. Brilliant pantry food. So everything's written tiny on here, but it says there's instructions in it. So let's peel the wrapper on this baby. Okay, I've worked it out. First thing we want to do is not throw away our egg case. Next thing we want to do is preheat our ovens to 170 degrees Celsius. We're going to need 130 grams of caster sugar and 140 ml of water. And that's all you need to cook it. <coughs> and it serves six. So we need a standard size baking tray, which is a 37 by 25 centimeter. And we need some paper on it. So it says it spreads out to roughly 20 centimeters. So what I've done is I've got a 21 centimeter cake tin here and I'm just going to trace around it. This way, when I put the mixture on there, I know where I'm aiming for the middle. Now it says to get out a mixing bowl with high sides. So I thought this was really cool. So the 140 ml of water is the bottom of the egg. So we fill the bottom of the egg up with lukewarm water. Now it says to carefully pour the mixture over the water. Now we have to get our electric beater out and beat it for 15 seconds on low. So 15 seconds later, we've mixed it in. Now it says to beat it on high speed for four to seven minutes, scraping down the sides occasionally until it's stiff and, form, and forms soft peaks. So I'm gonna put my timer on for five minutes to see how we go. So I beat it for six minutes and it's firm with soft peaks. I'm just going to scrape down the sides. Now it says we need 130 grams of caster sugar, which is the top of the egg. How cool is that? So fill the top of the egg with caster sugar. I think that is so clever. And it says to sprinkle it over it evenly. Now we mix on low speed for one minute and then high speed for one minute. <laughs> I can see what they mean by using a high sided bowl. Oh my god, yum, lick that beater. <laughs> okay, get our tray. Now if I remember correctly, everyone used to always use a plastic or wooden spoon, which is what I'm going to attempt to do. Alright, so I've got a pile in the middle. And it says shape it into a tall dome. I'll just go up and down around it, I suppose. Alright, so I haven't pushed it down. I'm just going up and around it and putting it into a dome. Alright, now that I've done that, it says get a knife and put three indents in it. I'm not sure going upwards oh, okay maybe that way so put your knife flat alright so we do one we've done two another third of the way around knife flat and, then, and apparently that's what makes it sit really well once it's cooked now before we put it in we turn our ovens down to 120 degrees. Now we put it in there for exactly one hour and we do not open the oven at all. Oh, and it also says put it on the middle shelf. So once the hour is up, we turn our ovens off, we do not open the door and we leave it there until our oven is completely cold. It also says in there you can leave it in there overnight with the door closed. Okay, so... I left, I turned it off and left it in there for about an hour and a half and the stove, the oven all felt cold. So I opened the door <laughs> and it was still warm in there. So I thought, oh, well, I've stuffed it anyway. So it started cracking. 
So I left the door open a little bit, just left it for another hour and now it's completely cold. Now a lot of people go on about cracks and that in them. I don't give a shit about cracks in them. What I care about is the crunchiness with that chewiness and oh, ha, ha. I love Eton Messes. If you have not subscribed yet, subscribe because I have got some killer pavlovas coming up. Now they said it went out to 20 centimeters and it's right around the edge of where I did it. So they're right, it's roughly 20 centimeters. So what I reckon I would do next time is pile it up how I did, but instead of have a pointy top, because I don't like it like that, how are you supposed to put your cream and everything on it? I would like do the top flat, but still have it a nice tall pile. So now we just gently pick it up, peel it off of our paper and sit it on a plate. Oh mate, this is gonna be insane, I know it is. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna set it aside for a minute, and what I'm gonna to do today is just a traditional pavlova. Well, as traditional as I can get. So it's set on the packet to store it. You wanna store it in an airtight container or a paper bag, not in the fridge, okay? Not in the fridge, and you can store it for up to three days before you're ready to use it. Now, when you make a pavlova, you should put the cream and all the fruit and whatever you're gonna put on top, just before you serve it. I mean, we put them in the fridge and we still eat them the next day, but you've always got a lot of stuff everywhere and that. So they're best made just before you serve them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a bowl and electric mixer out. I'm gonna pour in 300 ml of cream and just whip it up until soft peaks fall. Okay, today I've got a couple of kiwi fruit. I've got a pun of the strawberries. I've got a banana. I've got a can of passion fruit pulp. Um, at the moment, passion fruit is not in season and it's so expensive. So I just love getting those little John West cans. They're brilliant to have in the cupboard. Now I'm also going to use some flaked almonds today. Okay, first thing we'll do is put the cream all over it. Okay, I'm going to stick strawberry halves in the middle. Okay, I accidentally did something too hard and I caved it in a little bit. <laughs> God, I love pavlovas. Don't forget, we can always have an eat on mess. So I'm just going to break around here <laughs> and level it up and then I want to keep on going thing oh yeah I've got to get myself one of those proper cakes thingies that you know you serve it up with oh come on baby oh my gosh oh mate if that was in the middle of the plate that would have been awesome oh, I'll show you Oh, look at that. What that looks like on the inside. <laughs> How does the pavlova magic taste? Oh my gosh. That looks like marshmallow. Wow. That is really yummy. Try a bit of the crunchy stuff. So, what do I think of the pavlova magic? It's magic, mate. Oh, it is like marshmallow, beautiful stuff on the inside. It's got that beautiful crunchy outside. That base has got that little bit of chewiness to it. This is exactly how I remember pavlovas growing up. I think it's brilliant. I think everybody's pantry should have one in them. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have yourselves an awesome day. And I'll see you soon. Toodles!